Why is it always Israel that's told, oh, don't escalate when it's being attacked from every side? At least opposition leader Peter Dutton is now doing what Albanese has refused to since last October when Hamas slaughtered 1,200 Israelis. He's flying to Israel for a three-day visit to show support and find out what's really happening. Joining me is Michael Shoebridge, a former senior defence official, now founder and director of Strategic Analysis Australia. Michael Shoebridge, thanks for joining me. I was told earlier this year when I was, when I was in Israel by a very close confidant of Israel's Prime Minister that Israel must first destroy Hamas. We've seen that happen now. But after that, it's got to push back Hezbollah to deep inside Lebanon to push it away from the border and give Israel more time to see the rockets being fired in and take protective measures. But can Israel now, at this time, afford to fight both Hamas and Hezbollah at the same time? Well, yes, Andrew. I think the Israeli military is able to put most of its effort into fighting Hezbollah on the Lebanon border and inside Lebanon because it's got to the stage with the conflict in Gaza with Hamas where it can pretty much have a smaller force doing a holding action there. And this is a message Hezbollah really needs to think through because so far they have been acting as if they can just keep poking the Israelis, causing indiscriminate death, and Israel will be quite limited in response. I think that could well turn out to be an awful miscalculation. So what do you expect to happen now? Well, we've already seen the Israelis strike back at Hezbollah targets. I think we'll see continued restraint from the Israelis in that they won't do what Hezbollah has done since the 8th of October. Um, they will be professional and discriminate, minimise civilian casualties, but hit Hezbollah's military leadership and military uh, system and supplies hard. Now, I'm, I'm curious about what happened exactly here, why Hezbollah did this. Uh, it's been firing rockets almost daily into Israel. Uh, one in the morning that I went to the border, causing panic and the evacuation of more than 60,000 Israelis from the north for the past nine months. But what was Hezbollah up to with this attack? Well, this was quite a large-scale attack. There are about three barrages of a total of about 40 projectiles, including Iranian manufactured and supplied missiles. That's what caused the death of those uh, 12 young Arab Druze Israelis. I think Hezbollah has calculated that Israel will just soak up what Hezbollah throws at it because it fears a two-front war. And I think this is a miscalculation because the Israeli military has been repositioning for some months now, preparing to act against Hezbollah if it needs to. But Michael, you know, once again, we saw it when Hamas attacked Israel, the world saying, oh, you've got to, Israel, don't overreact. When uh, Houthi started shooting missiles and drones at Israel, oh, don't overreact. When Iran sent over missiles to Israel, don't overreact. Now here, Hezbollah firing missiles at Israel, killing 12 people. Again, our Prime Minister and others, oh, Israel, don't overreact. I mean, do you find it rather bizarre that all the action, all the effort seems to be into making Israel not overreact and not as much uh, to all these Iranian proxies who were attacking in the first place? Yes, Andrew, it's extraordinarily hypocritical and one-eyed to talk to the Israelis like they're the ones that have to exercise ultimate restraint and at the same time accept that Hezbollah and Hamas, the Houthis, and of course their backers in Iran need to exercise no such restraint. It's like we accept this mindless brutality and violence from Hezbollah, Hamas, Iran and the Houthis, but we expect the opposite from the Israelis. I think the most remarkable thing about this is the Israelis do continue to act with restraint and professionalism, and the kind of indiscriminate killing we're seeing Hezbollah do is not what we see from the Israelis, despite the gravity of the violence in Gaza.